The J-20 just pulled off something at the latest air show that has every fighter pilot talking, and what we're seeing changes everything we thought we knew about this aircraft. If you want expert analysis on military aviation, hit that subscribe button right now because you're not going to want to miss what I'm about to show you. Four massive stealth fighters screaming across the sky in formation, canards flexing and tucked inside those airframes is technology that's rewriting the rulebook on aerial combat. Let's get into it. Formation flying reveals combat readiness. What you're watching isn't just an air show demonstration. These four J-20s maintaining a diamond formation at 300 knots are practicing the exact tactical spread they'll use in actual combat operations over the Taiwan Strait. The spacing between aircraft, roughly 50 to 75 feet wingtip to wingtip, is identical to what F-22 Raptors use during operational missions. But here's what makes this different. The J-20 is 69 feet long with a 42-foot wingspan, making it one of the largest fighter aircraft ever designed to fly this tight. When you see them roll in unison like that, those pilots are pulling between 4 and 5 Gs while maintaining visual reference on each other, which in a jet this heavy requires serious skill and trust. Most countries can't even get four stealth fighters airborne at the same time, let alone fly them in formation like this. But what nobody's talking about is what's flying with them up there, and that's where things get really interesting. AWACS integration changes everything. That aircraft pacing them with the rotating radar dish isn't just there for show. The KJ-500 airborne early warning system you're seeing has a detection range of approximately 470 kilometers and can track up to 60 targets simultaneously while guiding 10 fighter intercepts at once. In a real combat scenario, that single AWACS would be feeding targeting data to all four J-20s, allowing them to maintain radio silence while hunting targets 300 miles away. The US does this with E3 Sentry AWACS, but here's the kicker. China has integrated their data link systems so tightly that the J-20 doesn't even need to turn on its own radar until the final moments before a missile shot. This means they can stay completely passive, invisible to enemy radar warning receivers until it's too late. The formation you're watching represents $2 billion worth of hardware practicing coordinated strikes, and every maneuver they're showing has a direct combat application. But the real story isn't about the electronics. It's about what these jets can physically do. Canard design hides major trade-off. Those forward canards you see moving independently aren't just for show. They're compensating for a fundamental design compromise. By placing the main wings so far back on the fuselage, Chinese engineers reduced the aircraft's radar cross-section from the front quarter by an estimated 40% compared to a conventional layout. But this created a massive stability problem. At speeds below 250 knots, this jet wants to depart controlled flight. The canards generate approximately 30% of the total lift during slow speed maneuvering, which means if the flight control computer fails, this 45,000 pound aircraft becomes unflyable in seconds. Compare that to an F-15 or F-16, where a pilot can still manually control the jet even with computer failures. What you're watching in these low-speed passes isn't just impressive, it's the flight control system working over time, making thousands of micro-adjustments per second to keep this thing in the air. The Chinese test pilots who validated this design probably had some very interesting days figuring out where the edges of the envelope were. But those canards enable something else that's getting overlooked in all the coverage. Turn performance defies physics laws. Watch this turn radius carefully, because the math here doesn't quite add up. A jet weighing 44,000 pounds empty, likely around 60,000 pounds with fuel and missiles, pulling what looks like a 3,500-foot radius turn at this altitude should be bleeding energy like crazy. The turn rate you're seeing suggests they're sustaining approximately 7 to 8 Gs which in a sustained turn would require thrust to weight ratios we didn't think the WS-10C engines could produce. Those engines are rated at roughly 31,000 pounds of thrust each in afterburner, giving a loaded J-20 a thrust to weight ratio around 1.03 to 1, barely enough to accelerate vertically. 
yet somehow they're maintaining turn performance that should only be possible at much lighter weights or with thrust vectoring nozzles. Either these pilots are executing these maneuvers at the absolute bleeding edge of their performance envelope and accepting massive energy loss, or there's something about these newer engines that's not matching published specifications. The canards are helping, sure, but they also create massive induced drag during hard maneuvering. What's really fascinating is how they're using that to their advantage in ways Western designers never considered. Roll rate exposes control philosophy. Count the rotation speed in that barrel roll. The aircraft completes a full 360 degree rotation in approximately 4.2 seconds. That's a roll rate of roughly 85 degrees per second, which is actually slower than an F-16's 120 degrees per second, but significantly faster than an F-15E's 60 degrees per second. For a jet this size, that's impressive, but it tells us something critical about Chinese fighter design philosophy. They've prioritized roll performance over pitch performance, which makes sense for beyond visual range combat, where small heading adjustments matter more than violent nose pointing. Those massive trailing edge control surfaces you see deflecting are creating roll authority through differential deflection rather than through raw aileron power. The vertical tails are also contributing, moving independently to assist in roll maneuvers, which reduces the load on the primary flight controls. This distributed control surface approach means more mechanical complexity, more potential failure points, but also more redundancy if one system fails. But there's one control surface movement they keep hiding from the cameras. And when you spot it, everything clicks into place. Hidden tail movement reveals secret. Freeze frame on that vertical stabilizer, and you'll see something that shouldn't be there. A horizontal seam about two-thirds of the way up the tail. That's not a panel line, that's a hinge point. And it means those vertical tails can pivot independently to create yaw control without using traditional rudders. In the entire world, only a handful of aircraft have movable vertical stabilizers. The F-18's canted tails, the Su-57's all-moving verticals, and now apparently the J-20. This gives them thrust vectoring-like yaw authority without the weight, complexity, and radar signature of moving engine nozzles. At high angles of attack, where traditional rudders lose effectiveness, those moving tails can generate the lateral force needed to point the nose at a target. The structural engineering required to make this work is insane. That pivot point has to handle not just the aerodynamic loads, but also the inertial forces as the jet maneuvers, potentially experiencing forces exceeding 50,000 pounds. So there you have it. The J-20's airshow performance just exposed capabilities that change the entire calculus of Pacific air combat. Let me know in the comments. Does that movable vertical tail technology give them a real advantage? Or is the lack of an internal gun still a fatal flaw? The best way to support this channel is to watch this next video right here, where I break down how the J-20 actually stacks up against the F-22 in a simulated engagement. I'll see you there.